Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are going to be looking at a teaser posted by Creative Assembly, which hints at definitely more Total War Warhammer content, but possibly even Total War Warhammer 3. Let's take a look. Heed the heavens, the Grand Theogenist demands. As Zia stirs, yes. <laughs> as wind is wanton to do, magic or otherwise. I am tired and drunk on rage. My eyes seek to make a fool of me. <gasps> and a fool I am made. Grungis Baldric, revered by soldiers, dwarves, and dimwits aplenty. So now we're giving it the once over, uh, let's go into more detail, okay? I'm gonna go through every little bit of it. Let's uh, watch a bit, I'll stop it, I'll talk about it. You know the drill, right? You know what happens with these kind of videos. It's what we're gonna do. So let's start doing that. Heed the heavens, the Grand Theogenist demands. Okay, so few things already. So Altdorf. That's the capital of the empire. That's the seat of power for the emperor and uh, one of the biggest cities uh, in the empire, arguably the biggest city in the empire. So um, yeah, that's already been covered in Warhammer 1 and in the Mortal Empires campaign map. So, you know, the empire are pretty um, uh, commonplace, but they are pretty much the sort of the... the um, that's sort of the protagonist, honestly. They're the main guys that are sort of elevated by all the other factions or trying, you know, torn down by all the other factions um they really are the, the sort of the main the main boys and the main human faction um so it makes sense to sort of uh, any sort of new big title to do it through the guise of the most familiar faction i think which is my first hint as to why it's warhammer 3 you know ground it in something that people are going to be aware of although wizards that makes things a little bit more complicated so the grand astrolabe so that is actually uh the essentially the um uh, the headquarters of the Celestial Order of Wizards. There are eight different schools of wizardry in Warhammer and, um, well, in the Empire in Warhammer. And the Celestial Order is one of them. That is the Order of the Heavens. So um, hence why they got an astrolabe and a big, big jolly old telescope there. Brilliant. Is that everything? Yep, I think that's everything and we can move on. The Grand Theogenist demands... Okay, my bad. Uh, one other thing. Two other things. <laughs> I'm explaining literally everything. There's a lot of, uh, not techno babble, whatever the fantasy equivalent of techno babble is. Fanto babble. So the Grand Theogenist, that's actually the head of the Church of the Empire, uh, the main church. There are many. There's a whole pantheon, but their sort of uh, their 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 big boy deity is Sigmar, and the Grand Theogenist is the head of the cult of Sigmar. Uh, Sigmar being the first emperor. Okay, didn't need to go into that much detail, but I'm going to. So, good. Oh, Azur. They mention Azur as well. Azur is the uh, wind of heavens, which is the wind of magic for that heavens. Uh, the eight magic, <laughs> the eight colleges all are, are split into eight because of the eight winds, as they call it, which is uh, uh, the, the ether of magic, you know. Um, it, it gets split into eight. It can be, you know... Eight sections can be torn away from it, each representing different sort of uh, vague elements or elemental attributes. And um, the skies, you know, the heavens is one of them, and that's called Azir. Okay, good. Let's carry on. Azir stirs. Yes. As wind is wanton to do. Magic. Okay, so I'm going to interrupt in mid-sentence here because uh, there's some speculation that the guy in the background over there uh, holding the book, uh, that book appears to be, in my opinion, that is just a sort of a generic tome um, for, for, the, for that, you know, wind of magic. It's just it's just generic spell book. I don't think it's anything, you know, in particular. Not that I can tell, um, but it could be something else. It absolutely could be. Let me know if you have any, you know... If you can speculate um, as to what that book is, it is shiny. But then, we already know that the um, you know the Azir wind is is acting up, right? So you know it's just magic's happening. It's, it's a wizard's tower, you know. There's wizard stuff, but there's further speculation that that old man in the background is actually the guy who plays the advisor 
um, to any campaign you play in Warhammer 1 or 2. Um, or at least most campaigns, the odd one has an additional, you know, different advisor, one's got a pet monkey, but, you know, whatever. He's mostly uh, the, the main sort of um, driving force for giving you sort of the <laughs> kind of tutorial missions, honestly. Um, so yes, the advisor, as he's known, or the old man, he uh, turns out to be an agent of chaos. Um, spoilers. Should have said spoilers before I spoiled it. Whoops. My bad. Anyway, so that's a thing. And uh, so there's speculation that it might be him, but let's be honest, he just looks like any wizard, doesn't he? Could be any wizard. We're in a wizard's tower, it's full of wizards and people look like wizards. Wizards look a lot like wizards, so that could just be a wizard. It's hard to say. So um, anyway, feel free to speculate though, because it's odd that there is another wizard in frame if he's not relevant in some way. That I think is the biggest clue. Like, there didn't need to be another guy in this room. It could just be this one wizard talking to himself. You know, as he seems to be. He doesn't seem to be addressing anyone. He does seem to be just monologuing. So, much like I'm doing. Let's carry on. Oh, magic or otherwise. I am tired and drunk on rage. I know. Didn't didn't play much before I interrupted again. Uh, tired and drunk on rage. Which is a weird thing for a wizard to say. Wizards tend to be quite um, chill. Uh, when they start getting a bit emotional, that's when you need to call someone to stop them because uh, they're dealing with sort of the forces of chaos. They, they're channeling the powers and the magic of chaos uh, in order to throw fireballs or lightning or whatever the hell they want to do. So if they do start getting a bit too emotional, that could be because they've been corrupted in some way or they are, you know, likely to at some point. So um, you've got to be very careful with wizards, especially humans. Humans are very fragile in um in in warhammer they they are prone to mutation and um exploding into a flesh puddle and opening a portal to hell dimensions so you know you got to be careful so the idea of him being you know openly i'm drunk on rage uh that anger component is um potentially a clue so let's carry on my eyes seek to make a fool of me and the fool i have made Okay, so, a couple of things here. Uh, some people have been saying it's a twin-tailed comet. They'd make a bigger deal of it being twin-tailed. I think the twin-tailed comet being a, um, uh, basically just the, the omen. Um, it's the sign of Sigma being, you know, the, the patron sort of god of the Empire. And, um, you know, arguably the, the patron god of the main characters in Warhammer, you know. Um, it was him that wielded the uh, titular Warhammer. So it makes sense, um, you know, to sort of hint at that sort of thing occasionally if it's sort of an omen of, ooh, a new game coming out. But that doesn't quite look twin-tailed to me. I think if it was twin-tailed, they'd have made more of a deal of it. Um, but there's also the, um, the... I've seen people speculate that maybe it's the Chariot of Zinch and, like, a bunch of other stuff. Um, but again, I think all of that is supposed to just be the twin-tailed comet you know, anyway, all of all of the things that are sort of meteoric in nature um, in in the game, you know, and in the, the lore, it tends to all be people's ideas of the same thing, you know. They see the same omen and they think it relates to them. It's the same in, in my mind. Um, so if it's a twin telecom, I'm fine, but I think it's actually just something that's distracting in the sky and has, has sort of caught the guy's attention, which leads on to... Grungus Baldric, revered by soldiers, dwarves, and dimwits aplenty. So, Grungnis Baldric. Fun. So, uh, if we have a look uh, on, on the wiki, because annoyingly I, I actually don't have uh, the book f with all the constellations in. Um, I don't have the, um, the Warhammer Fantasy RPG 2nd Edition uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Companion. I don't have that, annoyingly. I have so many 2nd Edition books, but that is not one of them. Um, so, uh, relying on uh, uh, warhammerfantasy.fandom.com slash wikia, um, Grangnis Baldric, sometimes spelled uh, Grangnis, is one of the star signs of the old world. It is the sign of martial pursuits. Okay, so martial pursuits. Hang on to that. Appearing as a dwarf with a baldric, it is in ascendance during late spring, early summer. So late spring, early summer, that is, uh, again, people speculating maybe that's a release date of something. Huh? Maybe the time is hinted at here. Um, although that all seems a bit convenient if the other speculatory nuggets are, um, are correct. So um, we'll see. People born under it are known to be disciplined honourable and skilled at arms. So there's a lot of uh, martial 
um, clues there. And the fact that he was drunk on rage makes me think that maybe this is a hint at uh, the chaos god Khorne, who is, uh, is basically the god of um, blood and skulls and fighting. Uh, likes fighting for no reason. You know, rage is his thing. Um, it's not uh, nothing careful and nuanced about it. Just, uh, you know, go crazy and start murdering people. Um, it's not very subtle. He's the least subtle of the chaos gods, I believe. Um, I mean, I don't believe it's quite evident. <laughs> so anyway, uh, also in uh, in this in this wiki, it says, uh, Grangni's baldric is a sacred sign of reverence to dwarfs and soldiers. So soldiers, obviously the martial thing, but dwarfs as well. So we haven't had uh, any sort of dwarf DLC is the thing. Uh, so we've already had a rework for them. Um, there's been a rework to their faction, but we haven't had any dwarf DLC in game two um, since they've been doing sort of the, the joint um, game one and two DLCs. Um, so that's interesting. So maybe some dwarf stuff coming. But I wonder what the heck they'd add. And it seems weird because the only rework we have left for the game is the Beastmen. The Beastmen are the only faction that haven't been like retooled for, um, you know, from game one for game two. So it'd be a bit weird to have like dwarfs versus beastmen or to have potentially dwarfs versus something, but then with beastmen in it, where the connection to beastmen, they tend to try and keep things um, sort of relevant uh, when they do a rework. It's something that's relevant to the DLC. So, you know, when they had, uh, when they did vampire uh, counts, they were releasing vampire coast. So it had the undead connection that sort of gave them, you know, a good excuse to revisit. So um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it could be. I don't know what it could be there, which is why I'm not sure if dwarfs is the thing we should be hanging on to for this. Um, it could just be that they wanted to hint at the whole Marshall thing to hint at corn, or it could be that they wanted to hint at a release date with late spring, early summer. It could be that. Um, it could be either, because what are the chances that literally everything about this would be relevant to um, what they're teasing? That's a it's a big sell. It signifies excellence in arms, skill in battle, and discipline. As such, many lords start their summer campaigns with a great feast during this constellation. Those born under this sign tend to uh, take soldiering very seriously. They fanatically hone their skills and live rigid lifestyles to toughen themselves. So yeah, I just it's a it's a lot of fighty stuff. So I'm thinking I'm thinking it might be something to do with corn. It could be something to do with dwarfs, or it could just be hinting at a release date, and we'll have more teasers to come. Um, I mean, teasers always build up to a trailer of some description, don't they? Um, or at least some news that's, you know, they don't just go teaser, 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 teaser. Oh, DLC's out? Oh, okay. Um, they tend to tell us what it is, so I'm, no, I, I'm sure we'll know the significance soon enough. Um, so anyway, let's, uh, let's watch the rest and see what else there is. Plenty. Okay, so the Starfield. This is an interesting one because uh, this is actually drawing upon real world knowledge, but why not, right? Why not? We're real world people. We should be able to draw upon real world knowledge. Uh, if we look on the right of this, uh, this Starfield, you can see quite clearly it's either the plow or the Big Dipper, depending on what you want to call it. Uh, it's got a few other names. And that is actually a component part of Ursa Major. Ursa, being from Ursine, um, it's bear-related. So, um, I mean, that could hint at something, maybe. I don't know what. Who knows? Could be anything. So, um, yeah, I guess that's it, then. I guess that's the end of the trailer and the end of this video. So, guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.